Hey guys, Jeremy here and today we're going to be doing texturing in Illustrator CC. Texturing is an awesome tool if you want to get more detail into your designs or add like a grungy grain effect without going into Photoshop. You can do it in Illustrator and it's scalable and it's vector. It's really easy to do and you can come up with a lot of effects. I use it all the time now and it's been really fun. So first up, I have these six boxes and what you'll notice is that they're all in grayscale. So we always got to work in black and white to make the effect work properly. So first off, we're going to make sure our color mode is RGB. And I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to select these first three boxes. And we're going to go to Effect, Pixelate, Color Halftone. I've just put it to 18 and I'm just going to press OK. If I zoom in now, you can see all these circles are bunched together. They're just organic. They're sort of randomized. I'm going to zoom out here and I'm going to go to Object and Rasterize. So we've got to just press OK there. I'm going to have to rasterize and turn it into an image. So to do that, I'm going to have to click on Image Trace up the top left-hand corner. So it's going to do its thing. And there, as you can see, it's turned into a black and white. And it's like a cool choppy effect, grungy. You know, if I zoom in, it's pretty much just shapes. It's black and white. Um, and to turn it into a shape now, what we do is go to Expand. At the top left, just press expand there. And as you can see, it's turned them into anchors and points. And now Illustrator recognizes that as a shape, and we can change the color, you know, manipulate it, use it how we want to. Um, it's always good to remember that it's best to add these effects when your artwork is final because it does lag your computer. So make sure you do that and make sure you have a good computer as well because <laughs> your computer might crash like mine has. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to go to file and we're going to change the color mode now to CMYK and what you'll notice is that the effect will look different so I'm going to go to effect again pixelate and go to color halftone just press ok and you can see the circles are more uniform the more straight in a straight line vertical and horizontal and it's different to RGB mode so you always got to make sure that um, you remember the right application if you're going to be doing a print or you're going to be doing a web banner or something like that, you know, make sure you use the right mode to get the, the desired effect you want. I'm just going to go to, I'll just rasterize this and I'm going to image trace this again like we did before. And yeah, it pretty much does the same thing. And yeah, you can see the difference there if I zoom out a bit. So yeah, that's the difference between CMYK and RGB. And now I'm going to show you how to do some examples of what we just learned. So I have this 7 here, and what I do is I press Control c and then Control f That pastes the shape in front, so if I move this, now it's I've got two shapes. And I'm going to click the gradient tool over here on my right. And I'm going to change it to a linear. Go to 90 degrees. Reverse it. Um, and the more black you have, um, the less texturized the effect will be. So the more white, it will be more like a spray. So use gradients for sprays, and it... If it's more full, then it'll be more thick. So I'm going to go to Effect, and I'm going to go to Pixelate, Color Half Turn, like we did. Press OK. And now I'm going to go to Object Rasterize. Press OK. And now up top left, press Image Trace again. Now I'm going to go to this little panel on the right, on the left, sorry. And you'll see the two lines, and just click that, and it'll open the Image Trace box. So this is what we use to make the effects, you know, different or change it the way you want it and you can just change the threshold um, if you want more like texture or noise which adds more dots you just change that um, just play around as you want right now it's looking fine and make sure you always select ignore white so it gets rid of the white and just leaves the black and i'm just going to press um, expand now so now that's a shape so i'm going to select it press i for eyedropper select that color and what i do i go to transparency multiply and now we have this cool effect it's great for shading um, and when you have different lighting scenarios in your illustration or your design um, you can get really cool effects i also say that it might jump out of your shape and that's okay you can just scale it down if you want or just like shift the, the texture um, if it's really small people won't notice anyway so yeah so we're going to do the same thing, Control c Control f for this one. I'm just going to go a linear gradient again. We'll make it from the left side. And I'm going to go to Effect, but this time we're going to go to Pixelate and we're going to go to Mezzotint. 
And you can see here, we have a lot of options. You've got fine dots, medium dots, and you have all these other ones. Just play around with it because you can get a lot of different effects. So object rasterize. And now I'm going to go to image trace. So now we've got this really cool like grainy effect. If you zoom in, it looks like freaking, I don't know, Safari. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go to the panel again. And we're going to go to ignore white. Um, I'm not going to bother playing around with those. Uh, I'm just going to go to expand. And then color this again and go to multiply. You can play around with the transparency and see what you get. So now I've got this really cool, you know, grainy effect. And that was with fine dots. But if you play around with it, you get really cool effects. So that's awesome. It's looking good. I'm going to show you a few more things. Um, this one, I just used effect, and then I used pixelate and um, point slice. <clears throat> I'm not going to show you. But yeah, and I got this really cool effect, and I just changed the color to um, an overlay. And that's what I got. It looks like a ripple, like a like water sort of, uh, which is really cool. It's good for like background and stuff. And I'm going to show you one more thing. We're going to use the mesh tool now. Press U for the shortcut. Or you can see on the left hand side here, it's um, like a, it's got squiggly lines. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this square I got here. And what it, the mesh tool does, it adds points, vertical and horizontal points on your bo uh, on your shape. I um, mean, it allows you to manipulate them. If I select the direct select tool, I can just like move these around wherever I want them. Move the anchors. And to get some really cool texturing effects, or if you want like to it to be in a specific shape or specific area, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change some of these areas to white. Or gray, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna select this, select these points. So you're gonna select these little anchor points and you just make them white. Um, that looks cool. So I'm gonna select this and then I'm gonna go to effect and we're gonna go to mezzotin again. Um, I'm gonna go to grainy dots. So object rasterize. And what's going to happen, all the areas that are white, there's not going to be the effect. It's going to be hidden. And where, where the black is, that's where the, the, the grain effect will be. So that looks pretty cool. And I'm just going to go there, uh, ignore white in the image trace box. And then go to expand. And now I have this really cool effect. And so that's using the mesh tool. So you can play around, you can get really cool effects with it. But yeah, thanks guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave comments below if you thought this helped you out. Um, or, you know, let me know what other tutorials you want to see. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos each week. And I hope you guys have a good day.